Welcome back to another Acting Analysis and Tips for Animators. And today I'm going to take a look at the movie Spectre. It's a James Bond classic. I say classic, I, don't know, I like all the Daniel Craig James Bonds. And today we're going to take a look at character personality. We're going to take a look at status and hierarchy, character focus and importance, and a bunch of stuff more. It's going to be awesome, so let's go. This was one of those where I had actually only two notes and I went through the movie and I saw a bunch of other things. I think generally as an animator, you should always look at a movie at any scene and take out what you could use for your shot. Not copying, you don't want to be a ripoff, but you can look at an idea of staging, of a camera, of a character move, a personality trait, uh, usage with a prop. There's so much where you can go into any movie and grab a moment and go, that would be kind of neat to add to my shot in a different way, tweak it to make your shot more original. And this is what this whole series is about. And speak of which, if you're new to this channel, hi, this is an acting analysis clip and I also do animation analysis clips. I do animation lectures. I do a bunch of stuff on this channel, mostly all animation related with the uh, odd every now and then different thing like a Monkey Island unboxing. But that's what it is. Check it out. If you like it, you can subscribe if you want. If not, maybe do it later. I don't know. Totally up to you. But let's get to the sequences. And the first sequence is, of course, a classic James Bond. Do that mayhem. Bunch of stuff. This is conveniently here for him to hold on to. Doesn't fall off either. And then after all of this, I'm gonna scrap forward a little bit, he falls, it's pretty high. Look at this. I mean, he would be falling on his butt if this couch wasn't there. This would be pretty painful, but you have a bit of a comedic moment and he looks at this here. Eh. And then the classic moment of, I gotta adjust my nice suit, even though there's full of mayhem and dust and carnage. And why am I showing you this? Because this A, besides being a cool mechanic shot where you have someone jumping from an elevated position to a lower position with interesting, uh, you know, kind of a prop piece to hang on to, potentially for asymmetry or just a different type of mechanic. I think that as an action shot is already cool. Or something where someone falls a bit out of control and lands on something cushiony. Again, this because couch is slightly like that, you're gonna have a bit of a bounce this way. This is great for asymmetry and just a change of direction. It's also a fluffy, a fluffy, but it's kind of a bouncy, soft. You can see this here, the impact. You're gonna have the compression down going this way. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can take from this where, what if my character lands on something bouncy, soft, icy, wood, old wood, wet wood, like there's all kinds of stuff you can do. And then on top of that, this is really where I'm showing you this because you can have all of this. You can have all the action moments of him jumping and landing, all really cool. But after all of this, how does the character react? This is very James Bond-like. There's another one here where he's on a train and jumps down and adjusts his cuffs. Classic, It's there are many, many scenes like this in James Bond movies. But that's what I would take out of that. If you have a character face something pretty incredible in terms of action, mechanics, something potentially dangerous, what will happen after that? What is their reaction to something to this? And I think this will really show a character's personality. And I think it add a little extra level, you know, after all of this, you adjust this, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna walk out. How does that kind of bookend almost in a way? It gives a little extra button at the end of your shot where you go, this was cool, cool mechanics. Oh, this person can animate. Oh, and then at the end, it was a really fun character trait that gives that extra layer of character animation. So it's not just movement, but there's more character to it. Next one is one that's, I mean, you can find this in any movie. People are talking and then some person gets up and then it continues. But I wanted to pick this out again, just because it's, it's fairly general. So I don't feel bad of, in terms of taking this and saying, hey, copy this. <laughs> it's, it's really everywhere. But you can see this with a slight raise here. He is not happy. If you watch a sequence, he's lecturing him and telling him, you can't do this. You know, you really messed up. And instead of apologizing or anything, it's typical James Bond fashion. He has a kind of a, a funny quip, like whatever. But you can see here the height. If I go onion skinning here back to this, let's go crazy. Let's draw an arrow. This is the height. And this is the height. You can see they're pretty much on the same level. It might be a bit higher, but it doesn't really matter, right? But that's kind of, they're on the same level. And now that he has this somewhat disrespectful tone and joke, you can see this here, I love how he says it, and he has that slight pause and then says something one more time. Then he gets up. And now, of course, it all changes. Now he is higher, he talks down to the person. And again, visually, you can see this here. If I put this and then some onion skinning, and you move over to Bond here, and there you go. See, Island actually matches really well, but he is higher. Now you might argue, okay, they're kind of the same height, yes, but technically he is talking down to the character. He assumed the higher position. This is now more about hierarchy and status, and also love that we cut from, if you look at this here, that's the size of his head here, and then we cut to this, 
look at how much bigger it is. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because of animation, you can go a bit broader, right? You can see more of the body. You can have more movement in the body. They can lean in, they can have gestures, all kinds of stuff. Same with him. And then when you do have a big reaction, he goes, how dare you talk to me? I'm gonna stand up and talk down to you. Now you zoom in and now you can really focus on the facial expressions and what is his reaction to the character now potentially threatening him. You can see this here, there's no bling, look at that. There's full intensity, he locks here and goes, whatever he says here. And again, it's more about taking the idea and not copying it and ripping it off, but the idea of they are somewhat on the same level, visually here. And then after that, we have character getting up and it's also mechanically interesting for you to show how our character is sitting and then getting up. This goes purely into body mechanics, but in service of a character assuming a new emotional position, like whatever you want to do with your shot. And then cutting to a close up where you can really play with all the little shapes that you might have on your rig, anything here where you can really push the emotion and have something in response to this. Next up is this one, and you can see how he has a bit of a look. He knows that she is coming. But you can take this in terms of what if you have a character. This is, I know there's a lot of work because it's character walking. But the character walks, another character comes in and has to catch up. There's more effort. She has to run and he's just walking. And she even calls him Mr. Bond and he doesn't stop. He has a bit of a smirk. You know, they have a fun interplay here. But she says a bunch of stuff and he still doesn't look. He doesn't stop until he asks what's going on. And she tells him there's something here. He finally looks but then doesn't care and keeps on walking and so on and so on. And I'm showing you this is because if you are walking and someone walks up to you and calls your name, in a normal situation, you would stop, turn around and maybe look in and they might start talking. So just the fact that someone is trying to catch up and it's more effort and that person does not stop and does not acknowledge by either stopping or looking at the character tells us something. And that's the general thing I'm taking out of this scene is that if you have two characters, think about that interplay. If someone is calling someone else, or I've shown this in other clips here, when someone puts out the hand to say hi and shake, and someone just kind of looks at the hand and doesn't do anything, that tells us, I don't like you. I don't want to shake your hand. Your hand is dirty. Maybe my hands are dirty. I don't want to shake your hands. There are many, many things. So again, if you have multiple characters, as I always say, think about how far are they from each other? Is someone getting closer? Will you then remove the other one to keep a personal space? Will they get even closer to it? They show they can, they can be intimate. Is one person getting close and talking? Is the other person not acknowledging and turning away? Or maybe turning away and then talking? There's so much you can do. So really, if you do have two characters in your scene, think about the staging and the composition. Where are they placed? How close do they get? How do they interact? What is the eye contact? How long is the eye contact? And so on. And that way you will go beyond just moving, beyond just lip sync where you move your character and the jaw is moving and all that stuff. But it's how do they relate and how are we supposed to feel about this character encountering the other character? I think that to me is really cool. And I think will elevate your scene. And then this one, I think is it's a cool camera move. And I'm hesitant in saying you should add a camera move to your scene because as an animator, when you learn, especially something like this, like this is just a basic walk. This is already going to be <laughs> pretty difficult. But I like this where there are a couple of things. A, you have mechanics, which is pretty cool because you can show off a personality walk, all kinds of walks, right? And then imagine we're really focusing on a face. He might have a really surprised face at one point or he's serious and then suddenly has a curious face or he's laughing and you're wondering, what is he looking at? What is he laughing at? What is he gasping at? There's so many different things. And then you can introduce that by bringing it into the foreground, which is a cool camera move and kind of obscures this a little bit. And you can play even more if you want to, where you can have a reaction here and then a bigger reaction there for contrast and surprise. But I like the idea here of a walk and a specific look. We're wondering, what is he looking at? Then we can see this here and he continues on and the sequence continues on with a bunch of stuff here. But then you have a, a change of focus and then she talks. So again, you could have something where there he's talking, he could be reacting and pantomiming. And then we change this again, body mechanics in terms of a sit down. Then we can change to a full close up of her or whoever is reacting to whatever he did. That whole interplay back and forth, I think it could be really cool with something like this and this type of camera move. And actually, if you continue forward, what I like is her handling of the prop. This is her job. She is dictating stuff about patients. So when she does this, she doesn't really have to look. Maybe she looks at how much time did it take to record? Maybe where's the button? And to me, like this is a familiar prop 
that is part of her job, she would use this blindly. But the reason why I like this is that if you are using something all the time and you're super familiar, and then you do this and you actually look, to me, it adds also a certain amount of importance. This could be something where maybe the actor didn't really think about how familiar this should be, or it could be, I am so deep in my thoughts, I'm looking at this, waiting a bit before I turn over and, you know, put my attention to something else. So for me, it's not just handling of a prop that's cool, but in terms of showing how familiar something can be, but how you look at it, how you use it. I think there's, there's just a lot more to props. Of course, it's a pain because of constraints and stuff, but I think there's a lot more to it than I think animators or at least students think. This is cool as we continue on here in terms of a character is talking and a character is listening and reacting. And I've, I've said this many, many times, I've brought up many examples here, and this could be something where you have it even like this, where you have lip sync, all that is moving, right? Jaw and lips. And that's the primary sound you're hearing. But all the animation focus is on this character listening and reacting. Now, in this case, he is saying stuff. So, I mean, this could also be something you can do. So you could have a two-person dialogue with this kind of a sloppy dialogue. You don't want to really animate, but it's okay because it's all blurry. But it's mostly there as a cue for him to respond and react and process and all that good stuff. I don't know. That to me is a cool setup and something you could probably use generally. To me, this is a general enough setup that you could use in your scene without feeling like a ginormous ripoff. And staying with props, he is drinking beer here. He saw a mouse before hiding and going through a little hole of a wall. And here he does this. It's kind of a dark, but he puts down the liquid and that goes through the cracks here. Actually, there's a bit of a slant, so the water or the beer goes through that. And it tells him, oh, this is maybe a fake wall. This is not quite what I imagined. There must be something behind it. Let me punch through it and see what's going on. And I like this again because it's usage of prop, but it's usage of prop to further the scene. There's something interesting that you can do with the bottle that, you know, it's kind of a, a clue giver. I don't know, there's something that's interesting to me, again, in terms of one thing leads to the next. You have this with that that leads up to this, and then, then it's full on mechanics and showing force and mechanics and pull and weight and all that good stuff. And actually, within the same scene, there's this, the classic, I'm entering a room that I am not familiar with. So I'm gonna look around first. I've never been here, I gotta look around. Is there a light? I gotta look for it and then use it and the light is on. So that's the big difference here. It would be really weird for him to walk in, then blindly move that arm up here and then switch on the light and then, oh, I can see what's going on here. Because he has never been in here. That would be super natural. Nine inches of time, he only looks over there. He knows exactly where it is. In your animation scene, you could have a look more here, maybe up and that the light switch is up here. But you can just kind of push that moment of where are things and maybe, maybe what you could do is look a bit and then bring up that arm here and tap it. So it's kind of blindly tapping, looking for something until he feels it. Then he looks over and then he switches on the light. So many, many you know ways you can do this. But I do like the idea. And as always, this is a big thing in animation, which I think is criminally underused, is that if you put your character in an environment, this could be one, two, three, whatever, how many characters you have, but wherever they are, consider have they been there before or not? Is this the first time in a hotel, in a secret room, at home, like wherever you are? And it's gonna change your choices. Is the character gonna look around more? Is it gonna tap and feel? Are they gonna go exactly, are they gonna blindly throw their jacket onto a chair and so on? It will completely change your scene just based on yes or no in terms of familiarity and consider that in your scenes. Now, speaking of being familiar, if you want me to be familiar with your scenes, you can send them to me through my workshop. <laughs> I don't know. That was, that was, uh, that was, um, yeah, no. But anyway, I do have workshops and we can talk about exactly this. We can talk about acting choices, animation choices, and just a bunch of stuff to make your shots even more awesome. You can sign up at any time. Link in the description with all information for my workshop. You can email me, let's chat. All those idea finding moments are not part of submissions. We can talk forever about layout and planning until it's actually a video submission. And that is a submission. You got 16 of those. This is a long pitch for something that you can look up and read for yourself. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. If you're still watching, thank you so much for your patience. And maybe you like this and you don't want to miss any of those analyses clips. So subscribe if you want. That'd be awesome. Helps my channel grow. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next upload.